Welcome to a detailed look at Court, a modern trick-taking game with a number of different twists. The first game from B5 Productions, who we have to thank for sending us a review copy of this card game. So Court was designed by Christopher Bouthner and features artwork from Sam Hyperwaltz, which somehow is all one word. I have to assume that's some type of branding. It was successfully funded through Kickstarter and started shipping to backers in December of 2022. Publication was done through Christopher's own company, B5 Productions. This is very much a passion product from a new designer using mm -hmm. Kickstarter as it was originally Kickstarter as it was originally intended to be used. Now, this trick-taking card game plays three to five players and takes under an hour and gets quicker the more you play and you get to know the cards and the abilities. Uh, the listed age on this is 8+, plus, which seems about right to me. You can currently get a copy of Court through GameFound, where it costs $15, and it should soon be in retail and online stores with an MSRP of $25. And note, that's not a mistake. It was kickstarted through Kickstarter, but the pre-order is on GameFound. Now, the Court deck contains only three suits, ranked 1 to 10, and a set of six character cards. Each game, you're going to split the deck evenly, and each player is going to get one of those character cards, or possibly a 10 if you're playing with more players. Standard trick-taking rules here apply, with players having to follow the suit led and the highest card taking the trick. Differences include the lowest card in the trick then activates its power for the player who played it. Then the winner of the trick gets a crown, a little token, and then grabs all the cards and then divides them up among the players. So when they take the trick, they decide who gets what. Those cards then form a tableau in front of the players called their court. At the end of the round, players then add up the values of all their cards in their court. These are your points. Then the court becomes your hand the next round. After three hands, the lowest score wins. Now, of course, there's a bit more to it than that with things like objective cards and the character abilities, but this works as a general overview for the game, so you know what we're talking about. Uh, to get a look at the cards, crowns, and other bits you get with Court, check out our Court unboxing video on YouTube. Now, the card quality here is excellent. Where you're looking at playing card quality cards, you've got cool little wooden crowns, some pretty clear instructions, and it even includes a scoring sheet and a pencil. While a solid enough Kickstarter passion project, that's not to say it doesn't have its problems. Yeah, the component quality here is good but there are some graphic design choices which do hinder the game, and there's at least one misprinted card. Now, we'll get into more details of that when sharing our opinion of the game after an overview of play. Start a game of court by pulling all of the character cards from the main deck and selecting one of each suit to use. Shuffle the rest of the deck and deal the cards out evenly between the players, and then deal out the character cards. When playing with four or five players, you add in 10 cards to the character cards. You only use three of the six provided each game. <laughs> Next, shuffle the objective cards and flip two face up in the center of the table. Place the crowns within easy reach of the players. The start player determined randomly as the lead. Now each trick, one player leads and everyone else has to follow suit. You can't follow suit, you can play off suit. And character cards can be played at any time and trump everything else, including playing off suit even if you have the proper suit. Now, the player who played the highest ranked card of the matching suit or the highest character card wins and takes the trick, as well as one crown token. Then you find the lowest played card in that trick. If that card has a power on it, it triggers for the player who played it. Here, though, off suit cards count as zero, so throwing off suit is a good chance your card's power will go off. Only odd-numbered cards have powers, and these range from swapping cards in your hand and your court, swapping cards between courts, getting to choose the card you win from a trick even if you didn't win the trick, causing a player to discard crowns, and stealing a crown from an opponent. Now, character cards count as the lowest card played for this as well. So in general, if you win a trick with a character card, its ability will go off. Mm -hmm. Now, the winner of the trick then divides up all the cards in that trick to the each player, uh, each card going to a separate player, one card per player. These are then placed face up in front of the players forming their court. When dividing up cards, though, you cannot give yourself a character card. After the trick is done, any player can claim one of the face up objective cards if they qualify for it. 
They include things like getting three crowns in a row, having a pair in your court, or other things like that. Now, the player who won the trick gets the next lead, and the round continues until everyone's played their full hand. Players then calculate their end-of-round score by adding up the value of their court, with characters being worth zero. You then subtract two points for every crown you've earned. Everyone then returns all of their crowns to the table, any taken objectives are replaced by new cards, and players pick up their courts, which become their new hand. The player with the most points gets the lead for the next round. You do this for three rounds. At the end of the game, players total their points for every round, subtract points for any objective cards they've claimed, which are worth five, minus five points each, and the player with the lowest points wins, uh, sometimes known as golf scoring. In addition to these rules, you can also play court in teams when you have four players. When playing this way, the team only scores the points for the player with the highest total. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it for how to play court. Basic trick-taking mechanics with a bunch of other stuff tossed on top. Now, when I learned about court, I knew I had to check it out. As you've surely noticed, if you've watched more than one episode of our show or one, or one of our videos, we love trick-taking games here at Tabletop Bellhop. We've reviewed a number of them in the past, most recently Thrones of Valeria from Daily Magic Games. We've also reviewed Macaron, Goris, Maximus, and The Crew, for example. We also love games that do something new and are always on the lookout for unique games. Court, a royally clever card game, fits in with both of these things. Now, of all the trick-taking games we've talked about in the past, this one probably is the most unique with the most new things being added in. It offers up quite a few differences from traditional playing card games. This includes the fact there are only three suits, the way face cards are used, the objective cards, the entire court tableau system, the fact odd cards have powers, and the entire lowest score wins victory condition. This is a lot of changes in one game, mm -hmm. and we think this is going to be the big thing that determines if court is right for you and your group. Now, personally, I like all these additions. As an experienced gamer, I've seen all of these before, just never all together, and never lumped in with a trick-taking card game. I do worry, though, that traditional card game players, or even more so, someone who's not familiar with trick-taking, is going to find all of these overlapping rules to be overwhelming and confusing. Now, I sit on the other side of this for Mo. While I certainly enjoy trick-taking games, this one just didn't quite work for me. Now, I haven't played it as many times, but I admit it just never felt natural for me, as one of the things I enjoy about trick-taking games is the ability to chat and relax while playing, mm -hmm. whereas this game required a lot more attention than I was sort of interested in giving. And I can totally see that, and I'm sure you're not the only one. Now, the other problem you get when you combine so many different mechanics is potential game imbalance, and I think this is a bit of a problem in court. There are some character cards that are just better than others, and then others that combo poorly or perhaps too well with certain objective cards if they come up at the same time. For example, there's one Jack character card that has you guessing what cards are in the other player's hands. Well, in this game, after the first hand, you know what's everyone in everyone's hand for the next round. So if you've got this Jack in your court at the end of the round, just make sure to memorize at least one, even better, two cards from each of the other players, play your jack and hand one. That's pretty much a free crown from every player, as well as one for winning the trick if your jack goes through. Another example of this is the jack that reverses the rules for the next trick. So the lowest card wins the trick, and the highest card's power triggers. When you combi combo this with the objective that has you taking it for uh, winning a trick with four or lower, you are pretty much guaranteed seven points. Well, minus seven minus points. Minus seven points. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, these interactions make the game feel like, as a whole, it probably could have used a bit more development and playtesting to me. At this point, we've actually chosen just not to use those specific cards, though you're still kind of stuck with one of them because they're both jacks. Now, listeners know we're not a huge fan of having to house rule games, so I think this is notable that we've done so for this one. Now, on a similar note, there are some inconsistencies between the cards, the rules, and the various powers. For example, the rules talk about royals. You use your royal to do this, you use your royal to do that, and then later in the same paragraph talks about characters. And it took a couple seconds to realize they're talking about the face cards, which are the same thing. And at least one objective card references your workshop, if you have the following in your workshop. 
and there's no workshop in this game. So we assume that must be talking about your court. Which again, this makes me think, I wonder if this game had a completely different theme at one point, or if they rethemed it something else and put it back. Because it just feels like like workshop and royals possibly was a di- in characters might have been different ways to name things. Unfortunately, we also ran into a few ambiguities that weren't clarified by the rules. For example, one objective card is win three crowns in a row. Well, what does win mean? Does it have to be one as part of tricks? What about the Joker card I mentioned earlier where you're guessing crowns and you're getting crowns off other players? Are those winning crowns? Or there's a queen card that just gives you two crowns if you win the trick. Is that winning two crowns or are you just getting two crowns? Now, I will say it's pretty easy for your group to have a short chat and decide how you want to play it when these come up. It would have been nice to find some kind of official clarification here. Interestingly, despite the game already being delivered to a majority of backers, there aren't many questions or comments on Board Game Geek to help players get official answers. Now, this problem ended up being extrapolated when playing in teams of four players. The four player rules are one short paragraph in the rule book with no adjustments to play except for scoring. But then you start playing and questions come up like, hey, wait, can I give my partner a character card? Because the rules say you can't keep a character, but they don't say where you have to give it if you can't keep it. And it really feels like you shouldn't be able to just pass characters back and forth. But rules as written, that's legal. Indeed, passing characters to your partner so you officially obey the can't keep them rule was quite broken, it seemed. As it allowed a team to collect and keep all of the face cards, which made them nearly unbeatable over three rounds. Yeah. And that's only one example. There were other things that came up when we were playing four players as well in teams. Now, the biggest problem we had with court above all of this, though, is the graphic design. There are a number of minor issues here that maybe if only one of them was in the box wouldn't bother me, but altogether is pretty significant. For one, they chose the three suit colors to be red, green and black and not having color blindness. Even I know these are terrible color choices when looking at vision issues, especially for people who have red green color blindness like my dad had. Uh, For people with this issue, I ran this through like a website where you can test it. The red and green suits look to be the exact same yellow. Now, to be fair, each suit does have a different symbol for it, which does make up for this somewhat. But I just wish they'd gone with a more colorblind friendly color. Like there are thousands of colors to pick from. Why did you pick red and green? And the symbols are small as well, which, depending on your visual acuity, might not help differentiate them as much as they could. Next, you have the card text. It is super tiny, both on the game card as well as the included reference card that tells you what all the card abilities are. Now, there's text on every single one of the odd numbers cards, and half the people I played this game with had to either grab their reading glasses or a magnifying glass to be able to read them. This is a case where clear iconography and just a description of what icon means in the rules would have been much better suited than actual words on the cards. This is even worse on the character cards. They use the same small black lettered font, but it's put over a dark gray background and put diagonally across the cards. We actually had one player that could not read these at all due to the lack of contrast. It's certainly an interesting design choice, and one really just not made with clarity in mind, whatever their goal as a, you know, decoration was. Now, with all these problems, I don't want to be too negative here. We were still able to play the game. Uh, There are only, what, five odd cards. It didn't take long to learn what each of the card powers were, so it's not like we're having to read the cards over and over. And the character cards we just gave to the kids who have much better eyesight and let them read off what the powers were at the start of each game, going, here are the three that are in this game so that everyone knows what they do. And to me, this is part of the problem with the game, as familiarity and repeatability is part of what makes a card game like this so accessible and enjoyable. And having to think about what's going to be different each game just lessened my enjoyment of the experience of playing. Now, we've tried court at all player counts and found that this game worked best at three and honestly worse at uh, the four player team mode. With three, the entire deck is in play. So you have perfect information. No cards are out and everyone has a nice, long, nice, nice, thick hand to be able to play through. And there's just something about there's three suits for three players just feels right. 
it's not a mechanical thing. It's just a feeling thing when you're playing three suits, three players. And what I like is that this player count, you have enough cards that you're probably going to have cards from all three suits, which is something that personally, to me, makes trick-taking games more fun and interesting, where your goal in part of the game is probably going to be to void yourself of a suit. To me, that's a key part of playing trick-taking games, which you didn't really see at the higher player counts, so you didn't have as many cards and often only had two suits in your hand. Right. And while I didn't fall in love with this game, I will definitely agree that three player is the sweet spot for this game. It, it did definitely feel much more enjoyable at that point. Yep. Now, looking at just the gameplay of the game, ignoring all any production issues or ambiguities, I liked the gameplay here. I liked what they were doing. Now, the best part in this game, the the really brilliant thing is the court system and the way you split the cards up at the end of a trick. This is a very cool mechanic with surprising depth. When you first hear about it, and probably anyone listening right now is probably thinking, well, you just take all the low cards. That way you get the least points, right? Well, the, by doing that, you end up messing up your next hand because you're going to have to pick up that whole court. Now you're going to have a handful of low cards, and you're probably not going to win a lot of tricks the next round. And not winning tricks means not getting crowns and not getting minuses. Plus, not winning tricks doesn't let you divide up the cards to try to get those objectives. So you have to plan around what card powers you have as well. So if you don't mind, you don't mind taking the 10. If you got a one in your hand, you can play later to pick up that 10 to then use to use another trick to give that 10 to someone else. I, it's the whole thing for this game. There is a huge amount of strategy and planning. And honestly, compared to all the other trick takers were played, perhaps even more strategy than any other. And this is where things to sort of sort of start to overdo it for me. I think if this had been a three suit game with this split card collecting for the next hand Roy, uh, tableau in front of you, this would have been a fantastic game that I would have enjoyed. But then you add in the powers on top of that, and that's where I find it starts getting a little bit too busy for mm -hmm. what I was wanting out of the game. Totally fair. So I'm tempted to try a game now without the powers and see how it plays. Now, another thing I want to note, which I did mention in passing before, that is that every player in this game has perfect information as soon as the last card in the first round is played. At that point, you not only have seen every card in play in the game, but exactly what cards what players are going to have in their next hand, which makes the game extremely tactical and really rewards card counting. Together, this level of strategy and tactics is a mixed blessing. Not everyone who plays card games enjoys counting cards. Some people just want to focus on what's in their hand and play more casually, and that doesn't work well in court. No. If you can't be bothered to count cards and keep track of what's been played and what hasn't and who has what, you won't do well against another player who is doing this extra work. Now, as for my personal game groups and people I've been playing with this, uh, playing court with, this has had mixed reception. For my youngest daughter, who is not all that young, I don't want to think I'm playing with a young kid here, the multiple mechanics and various card abilities and things you have to think about at once were too much. I'd, like For her, it would be completely unplayable. On the other hand, my oldest daughter loved it, adored it, and wants to play more. She's been asking to play the game more often. Now, my wife, Deanna, didn't love it the first time we played, but grew to enjoy it more the more we played. And in the end, I think feels pretty favorable about the game so she is the one that had the most issues with the graphic design, and she did not enjoy four player with partners. Now, my trick taking loving friends enjoyed the game quite a bit, as did my mother in law, who's also a big fan of traditional card games. Personally, I enjoy it. I plan on keeping it in my collection. I'm just not sure it'd be my first choice if someone asked me to sit down and play a card game. But if someone asked to play it, I'm not going to say no. And for me, it, it unfortunately just never landed. Uh, maybe if I continued playing it, I might come around. But with the number of trick-taking games out there, I'm not sure I want to learn to love a game when there are many I did love from my first hand. Overall, I dig Court. Feels like a traditional trick-taking card game with a bunch of additional stuff thrown on top. To me, it's got kind of a trick-taking for hobby gamers vibe or like expert level trick-taking game. Um, with the mechanics, and I, I only wish that this feel was backed up with a hobby card game production value to go with it, and graphic design. What I would personally love to see this game is for it to do well enough, enough people to buy it, to get a second printing. 
and then have that second printing improve on the existing problems. Give me a nice clear reference card listing all the card powers, toss in some iconography on the cards, swap to a more colorblind friendly colors, and clear up any ambiguities. Because as it is, we enjoyed court, but it could be better. At the very least, some of the ambiguities need to be clarified in an FAQ on Board Game Geek or elsewhere. Uh, one thing I've, I've been thinking, and I actually didn't even put this in the notes, is this game would be fantastic as a trick taking tournament game. Mm -hmm. For people who really want to take this seriously, uh, you know, in, in, in any sort of tournament situation, this game is great because it really does play well for competitive card players. Yep. I can see that. Now, if you enjoy traditional trick taking card games, uh, especially games like Spades, you might want to check out Court. This is especially true, though, if you happen to have a group that often ends up being only three players. There are not a lot of trick-taking games out there for three. Yeah, this is definitely a bonus, as many trick-takers are more even player count oriented. Now, if you are a card gamer who loves card counting and playing against opponents who do the same, where the skill is in reading the other players and playing through your hand in the right order and not the luck of the draw, you're going to love court. This card game is a card counter's dream due to the fact that after that first round, everyone has perfect information. My dad was this kind of player, and he would have adored this game, especially if we started playing a penny a point. If you're looking for a more casual trick taker where you can enjoy the conversation with friends and not fixate on the game, this might not be the one for you. Yeah. And if you haven't played a trick taking game before, or at least new to this style of card game, I would say you should probably stay away from court. There are a lot of additional mechanics tossed on top of the whole I lead you follow mechanics found in a trick taker and i think it'll be overwhelming personally i'm looking forward to trying this game out with more people perhaps bringing it out to a public play event uh and hopefully catching some traditional card game players who haven't really experienced modern trick taking games just to see what their th thoughts are well that's it for our review of court a trick taking card game and a lot more perhaps a too a bit too much for traditional playing card players but Lots to munch on if you like crunch and card counting. We're always on the lookout for new trick-taking games to try. Do you know of one we haven't played yet and should check out? Let us know about it in the comments below. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, follow, ding the bell, thumbs up, or do whatever, wherever you are, has you do to show you enjoyed this review. After that, I am invite you to check out my written review of court over on the blog where I was able to get into more depth than we shared here. That's at tabletopbellhop.com.